He was a weakling with a useless skill, until he discovered a hidden dungeon where an overpowered adventurer who was trapped inside decided to train him to be the strongest adventurer. Nor Stadia was the son of a bottom-ranked noble with no hope for the future, no cool magic skill, and only one friend. He woke up to begin his life as a librarian after graduating preparatory school as he'd rather earn money than burden his already useless dad. He dresses up and heads down the stairs only to find his father prostrating face down as he informs him that his position as a librarian was stolen by the son of a viscount. Just like most aristocratic societies, each noble had a rank to which respect was accorded to them. But unfortunately, they only had a baronet title, which was the bottom of the food chain making it possible for anyone ranked higher to outplay them in society. This news made Nora depress as he made his dad stand up while casually throwing jabs at him, calling him a useless good-for-nothing dad. His dad heard this, but since his son wasn't far off, the old man just continued his attempt to pacify him. Nora then asked his shitty father what he'd do, and that's when Alice, his sister with chronic case of brother complex, arrived stating that she would whoop the Viscount's ass for her beloved brother. However, they tell her she shouldn't anger the nobles as it would only make matters worse, so she then suggested that he take the entrance exam for the Hero Academy. However, Nor knew he was probably shit, and truly he was shit and probably not fit to become a knight or adventurer even though it was an opportunity to be set for life. Alice managed to convince him, so he decided to give it a try since the little slut would probably traumatize him if he decided to become a shut-in. In town, he met up with Emma and her massive cannons and for some reason, she was super energetic to waste her life as a librarian. Despite being a baron who is a rank higher than Nor, they were childhood friends since their parents got along. When she talks about their new job as librarians, Nor reveals that he was replaced by the Viscount's son, and this made her visibly depressed which made him ask why she's taking the news harder than him. She then revealed that she had good news concerning his great sage skill. This skill was like an encyclopedia, just like Raphael from Tensura, however he wasn't able to use it because anytime he uses the skill, he gets hit with a soul-numbing headache that fries his brain cells. She then revealed that while reading an ancient text, she learned that the great sage Merlin was also plagued with headaches but he was able to manage it by kissing his wives. She then asked if he wanted to try it out but the doofus had to make her repeat herself causing her to be embarrassed. Our man was about to go for it like a real chad but she stopped him and asked that they change locations. When they arrive at a rooftop he goes ahead and kisses her but bro was lovestruck and forgot that he was supposed to try out his skill. She reminds him so he activates the skill and asks Merlin how he can get stronger in order to pass the academy exams to which he responds by instructing him to explore a hidden dungeon. When he asked for the location, which was another question, he was hit with a migraine so he asked Emma for her first aid kiss. Using the instructions from the sage, he locates the hidden dungeon and recalls the spell to unlock the massive door blocking his path. He then yelled open sesame which activated the door causing it to swing open. Once inside, a feminine voice that was not suspicious at all guided him to the second floor and since he was a simp, he blindly followed her voice until he arrived in a room where he found the hot baddie bound in chains. At first he thought she was Ice Spice but then she wasn't going bald. Using telepathy, she asked him to touch her head and when he did, she speaks to him telepathically, introducing herself as Olivia's servant, a self-acclaimed super-adventurer who somehow found the hidden dungeon on her own, killed the monsters inside but was dumb enough to fall for a trap that trapped her there for 200 years. Nora wanted to undo her chains but she revealed she dies since the chains are called death chains that keep the user alive. When he asked why she called him, she revealed she wanted to develop plot but our virgin loser brushed for common off. She assumed he was a powerful adventurer since he was able to discover the dungeon but he revealed it was his skill that led him to the dungeon. When he revealed he was actually a useless negative tier new, she offered to give him her skills since she couldn't do anything with it. When he touched her forehead with his, her skills instantly passed to him and she then explained that her skills can create other skills, pass the skills on to others, and even edit them as well. This creative bestow and edit skill uses life points and when his life points reach zero, he'll die so he must always do things to help him refill his life points. These include harem activities becoming a glutton or subscription from his TikTok fans. He then checked his life points which were 550, so she asked him to try his new skill out. In another location, he encounters a slime monster so he creates a stone bullet with 50 points and fires it at the slime. Although he beat it, he felt like he just went three rounds non-stop and had to take a breather. At home, the scum uses his obsessed sister to refill his life points, although it wasn't very effective. He then meets up with Emma for the same experiment, but the babe thought he called her for a date and wore a revealing dress that exposed her milkers. He then asks to hug her, which she agrees to, and this boosts his life points more than it did with Alice. 
He recalled Olivier telling him he needed to gain 300 points if he was to create a skill called Discerning Eyes which would allow him to scan info on every living and non-living thing. He then activated his Discerning Eyes which he uses to check Emma's state. When she complains that her shoulders were stiff, the overzealous boy immediately uses his skill to make her racks peanut-sized, making her wear a Sigma face. He then tells her small plots matter too, however he wasn't really a fan so she asks him to make her mummy milkers again which he did and ended up wasting his life points. On the day of the entrance exam, the examiner instructs them to form a team of three and collect monster materials which would be used to grade them. Since it was an automatic failure if they returned empty-handed, he tried to approach some guys but they talked him down since he was a low-ranked trash. Just then, Emma shows up revealing that she quit her job just to be with him. On seeing Emma, another girl named Lenore offered to join them but when Nor tried to introduce himself, she told him there was no point remembering the name of an NPC. Once the exams began, the bitch Lenore ditched them to buy some materials at the market so Nor told Emma to wait for him while he hunted some monsters. Since he was an unlucky lad, the first monster he encountered in the dungeon was a level 99 dead reaper who could end him in a single strike. He tried to avoid all his slash and wanted to negate his one-hit kill skill, but the life points needed was just too much, so he created a skill that made its body heavy. This ended up draining him so much that he could barely move, but then he summoned courage and slid past the reaper after which he created a massive stone bullet and donuts the f before collapsing. When it was time to reveal the rankings, Noor thought they might fail since Oliver claimed the Reaper's head was trash. However, everyone was shocked when their team broke the entrance exam record thanks to the skull he reluctantly added to the mix. Once home, everyone's mood lightened up, most especially his shameless dad who was just glad his son wasn't going to be useless like him. However, the next problem to tackle was the insanely expensive enrollment fees. The next day during breakfast, Alice was all over Noor while their parents watched them with a poker face screaming this is in Alabama. Alice then decided that he'll be the new head of the house thanks to his new achievement, and this made the shitty dad freak out. When Nora talked about the enrollment fee, the old man claimed he had some money saved up, however, when he heard it was 300,000 rels, he revealed he'll need a year to provide the money, so Nora just decided to figure it out himself instead of relying on an old man competing to be more useless than Sakura. He then headed to the dungeon to meet Olivier, who suggested he sells rare monster items from the dungeon, but he explained that he doesn't want to draw attention to himself as he even begged Lenore to take credit for the Reaper's head. With no other option, she directed him to the Adventurer's Guild to hustle. There he met an intimidating man who was blocking the cute receptionist view, so the girl named Lola told him to be it. After making introductions, she explained that the Odin Guild has different ranks of adventurers who carry out different ranges of jobs. She explained the ranking system after which she brought out a form for him to fill. When he noticed he'd have to write down his skill, he was hesitant so Lola revealed that any information provided would be classified. When she saw him put down Olivia's skills, she switched to b mode, asking him why he was impersonating Olivia, who was the guild's pride and joy. But the idiot referred to her as master, which only made Lola more pissed as she thought he was another main character wannabe. She then pops out a book to test if he is lying so Nora asks what would happen if she turned out to be wrong, so she promises to raise her skirt and apologize in a cat voice. He places his hands on the book which reveals all her skills causing the pervert to immediately demand she lifts her skirt, and this ends up boosting his life points. After registering, he revealed that he is desperate for some cash, so she suggested that he hunt some rainbow grasshopper. Although she explained it's actually a D-rank quest, she then switched to Sunbeer mode, telling him she'll prepare a treat for him if he returns alive. Once at the location, he thought about Emma, his human first aid, and decided to just create a skill to negate the migraine side effect. However, when he realized it would cost 300 points, a stinky bastard hesitated at first but ended up creating this skill, after which he activated Great Sage, which allowed him to easily locate the grasshoppers. While he picks them up, a galloping war thug that turns out to be Emma shows up and tries punching him but ends up crashing to the ground. She then asked why he became an adventurer without consulting her, which made him explain that it might be too dangerous for her, but she reminded him of their promise to always be together. She then volunteered to continue taking his pain away, however, he told her he already sorted that out by creating a skill, but she could still kiss him anytime since it was just a greeting. He also revealed that he still got a mild headache which made her brighten up. Back in the guild, Lola presented him with 250,000 rels, which was the most money he had seen in his life. She also teased him by pressing her plots against him, but Emma Milkers won't have a girl with bad fashion taste outdo her. Lola too didn't let up, and they ended up drawing attention to themselves, so Nor decided to burst their brains with compliments one after the other, which made them calm down. 
They soon headed to the location of their next quest, where they were suddenly attacked by ugly-ass goblins, the same level as Emma. While Emma draws out her twin blade, Nora uses a stone bullet to burst some nuts before slashing it in two, but then the other goblin is defeated by a huge-ass unicorn rabbit. He quickly used discerning eyes to observe its level, so he begs Emma to stand back, but the smart girl didn't want to be Sakura, so she engaged the rabbit, dodging its strikes repeatedly since she was faster. She then uses her magic spells to blast it severally, but this only angered the bad bunny, so it leaped and caused an earthquake with its body, and when it moved to finish her off, Nora yeeted it away with a stone bullet. They then took cover in the forest where Emma began to sulk, so to make her feel better, he suggested that the monster had a core she couldn't reach. When his words didn't reach her, he decided to upgrade her dual-wielded dagger skill, but it cost too many life points, so he opted to edit the skill which was a lot less than upgrading. He then revealed that he could make her strong but she'll have to do something in return. Although she promised to cooperate, when he told her he'll have to nibble her ears, she willingly became his Karen. Her cries ended up attracting the rabbit, so he tried to hurry up but it was already too late as they were attacked from behind. The bad bunny sprung on Nora, ready to drill a hole in him, but he created a stone barrier at the last minute. He quickly upgraded Emma's stats, and just when the stone broke, super fast, Emma one-shooted the bad bunny. That evening, when they submitted the rabbit's horn to claim their reward, Lola was stunned that they managed to pull off such a quest on their own. Surprisingly, Emma thanked her for motivating her to work hard, and the two ended up settling their differences. Nora then brings out the rabbit's corpse and offers it to the guild, so that everyone present would have a test of the rare juicy meat. After giving him his reward, everyone congratulated him since he could now enroll in the Magic Academy. However, the love-filled atmosphere was so heartwarming to him that he promised to thank Olivia for turning his shitty, baronet life around. On arriving at the academy after paying the enrollment fee, Emma suddenly made Nora bow when a high-ranking student passed. Although Nora didn't recall her, Emma explained that she is Maria Albert, the daughter of a duke. On hearing this, he wanted to use his discerning eyes to observe her status, but he was shocked to learn she had a curse on her that'll kill her on her 16th birthday. The next day, Nora woke up feeling the weight of the world on him, but it was just Alice and her big head trying to suffocate him while he slept. As usual, she was all over him, and he didn't mind since his life points would increase. Just then, Shitty Dad opens the door to find them in the weirdest of positions, so he simply backed the door and yells his guts out in frustration. In town, he also meets an overenthusiastic Emma, who wanted to partake in their morning greeting, so they went to the nearby forest for some life point boost. Since they had to wear a badge based on their rank in school, they felt they would be out of place, and indeed, Nora especially was treated like garbage, all different shades of nobles who were attracted to Emma's racks approached her. As they all boasted of their ranks, Nora just sat there cursing his good-for-nothing dad. One guy even approached him, but as soon as he saw his baronet badge, he vanished. When Maria makes an entrance, she shockingly greeted Nor using his full name which was honestly surprising to everyone. Since the radiating Maria acknowledged him, Mudbrain Four Eyes decided to introduce himself, however, no one was having him. During their introductory lesson, the show-off instructor named Elna revealed she was once a mercenary like anyone gave two f She promised to whip them into shape while licking her lips like a demonic villain. For their first lesson, she proposed a self-defense demonstration, and since Noor stood out by radiating poverty, she decided to make him her punching bag. She asked him to draw his sword and attack her, claiming it was impossible, so he drew out his sword and checked her stats, which was 232. This made him give it his all as he launched towards her, but she blitzed past him using a skill called Back Step. She tells him to try out the skill and immediately launches towards him, but he couldn't even react and got hit in the guts. However, she immediately heals him and promises a reward if he can pull off her defense move and as expected, the virgin loser as well as the crowd of hormonal freaks all get motivated. He then created his skill using creativity and was able to pull the back step skill in one try. Unfortunately, her reward was an ass massage she claimed a lot of adventurers longed for, but this was more of torture to Noor who couldn't breathe as she weighed as much as four bulls. Once she got up, Noor noticed his life points increased a lot. When it was time to pair up, Elma insisted that Emma and Noor can't pair up since they were dating. They had to correct the misunderstanding and revealed they were only childhood friends. She also stopped Maria and her maid Akane from pairing up so the class's number one pervert approached her. However, she declined his invite stating that she was unworthy of her rank and invite baronets who worked extra hard, so she decided to pair up with Noor. As soon as they held hands, the brother-obsessed Alice disrupted her classes as she felt Noor was up to no good. For their pairing exercise, they would take turns tossing each other, however, Nor wasn't scared since he already bought a passive defense skill that was so cheap, he wore a smug look. When she tossed him, he landed on his butt as expected, 
but then Maria collapsed and gave him a face full of her plots. When Amin comes to her side, he realizes it was the curse that was slowly draining her life. He tried to edit it away, but it would cost four times his life points, so he inquired from the great sage the most efficient way to gain life points. The shameless AI then tells him to line every girl present and clap all their plots one by one which would earn him 2,000 LP. However, Nora claimed that 2,000 LP wasn't worth the stress. Using the skill made his head hurt as usual, so he begged Emma to kiss him, which he even does without her permission, as he couldn't bear the pain. This act only made Elna super pissed or jealous, but she ended up making him run 50 laps. Later that day, they headed to the guild where Lola freaked out as she was caught unfresh by her crush. Once she ran inside, the other receptionist revealed that she went to adjust her makeup. After explaining Maria's case to Lola, she revealed that one of her friends who is a cleric can perform an exorcism that would dispel the curse. She also claimed her friend is super busy and for some reason, doesn't like to take on cases involving curses however they were willingly to give it a try. When they asked what the problem might be, she claimed her friend kept it a secret so Nora decided to do all he can to save Maria before her 16th birthday, which was in a week's time. When Lola got to the temple, there was actually a huge crowd waiting in line to be healed, as well as some people coming out looking brand new. Inside the temple, she meets up with an exhausted Lumina who was trying to rest after burning so much energy healing the people. Meanwhile, Nor headed back into the dungeon to visit Olivia, who was putting up an attitude since he didn't come to visit her frequently. She complained that she had been bored out of her mind because of him, so he apologized and explained the issue with the Duke's daughter, which was the reason he had been occupied. On hearing his story, she claimed the curse might be one that was passed down from her ancestors and only took effect when it got to her. To undo it, she estimated about 10,000 LP, which he couldn't possibly rack up, so she suggested he relied on a cleric. He then revealed that was his plans before proceeding to ask what a cleric looks like to which she responds that they are probably part elf, and they would serve as a 10x LP booster. He quickly brushed off her teasing, but she didn't stop and went on to explain how to open the lady's floodgates which made him get a nosebleed. Back to the main topic of increasing his LP, she suggests he creates a forbidden skill called Lucky Lecher, which he immediately activates without knowing what it does. Once in town, he met up with Emma, who claimed he was running late, so he hurried up only to trip and land on her calcium cannons. Just then, Rhys Khan began to work wonders with the girls around, which made him realize it was the effect of his new skill. He quickly realized the skill would probably become an inconvenience, so he used his editor's skill to tweak it, so that the skill doesn't activate during serious situations like the lame fan service in Fire Force. He wore a smug look on his face which made Emma bicker while Lola and Luna watched them from a distance and Luna claimed he was her type. Once things calmed down, Lola introduced her to the duo and while they walked to a restaurant, Emma couldn't help but notice that she was beaten, at every lady aspect except her next stiffening plots. Inside the restaurant, as soon as Nora explains the cursed person was Maria, Luna reveals she already took a look at her some time ago, but decided not to help out. When they asked why, she claimed it wasn't due to her capabilities, but she just couldn't lift Maria's 16th year death curse. She then asked how Maria has been coping, but Nora explained that she won't last a week since her episodes have become more frequent. Seeing that she felt down and dejected, Lola tried to cheer her up by pointing out that she heals hundreds of people every day so she shouldn't feel responsible for just one person. Nora was also concerned so he used discerning eyes to check her stats which let him learn about the condition for lifting curses which meant her lifespan would be reduced based on the strength of the curse she erases. On their way back, Nora assumes the lifespan as an elf won't cover the drawback of Maria's curse and wonders what he could do. However, Luna had a change of heart and decided to help Maria out which was honestly shocking, so he asked for some alone time with her. At an alley, he revealed that he took a peek at her status and knew what she risked, but she didn't let him finish his sentence and with a smile on her face, she explained the joy of saving lives. She told him about her mother who was also a cleric and had to take on curses until her lifespan was exhausted. However, she said this with a smile and said she would give her life to save Maria. Just then, they noticed an accident at a worksite and when they got there, they saw a child gravely injured so Lola begged her to heal him. She then took out her guns after which she used a skill called Healing Shot to heal him in one go. Everyone was impressed by her skill, but she suddenly went mute and landed face first on the floor. When Nora helped her up, he noticed she was hit with a chronic case of anxiety as she freaked out while murmuring how scared she is of curses. He took another peek at her stats and noticed her Coorda skill activates any time she uses a lot of mana. After she woke up, she apologized for her embarrassing display and tried to make them forget about it by focusing on the damsel in distress, Maria, who urgently needed their help. Seeing that she was pushing herself too hard, Nora suggested they look for an alternative and made her reveal she might die if she goes through with the exorcism. 
On hearing this, Lola pushed her to the wall for keeping such a secret from her all these years and just when she was expecting a slap, she got a warm hug from her friend instead. While they enjoyed their moment, Nora took a look at her skills in an attempt to figure out a way of her to survive after lifting Maria's curse. He then figures out the best bet would be to replace the lifespan drawback with her finances. He revealed he has a way to make everything work out but doesn't have enough LP. He even gave them a list of things that could increase his LP and begged them to figure out a way to boost his LP. Although they had no clue what to do, Lola recalled an event where they could easily earn cash and explained that it is a harem pride event. This event took place in a coliseum and the order of activities involved low-life haters who can't score a hot baddie at the cost of their lives, so they had fun watching other guys and their girlfriends. So basically, it is a gathering of old farts who hate people that have succeeded in romance, so they formed a cult to make themselves feel better. Just the thought of what was going to play out made Nora weak to his knees, causing him to fall down. Meanwhile, Amain soon finds out Maria's health was deteriorating further as the curse was now so strong even she could feel death coming. Back at the harem event, everyone was eager to commence so Lola explained that this was because the audience are the judges who are free to hurl insults at the participants while raiding their harem. When the first contestants took the stage, the pig-nosed girl introduced herself alongside her ugly companions, but the crowd was dead silent for some minutes before barking out insults, referring to them as the fugly pig harem. Even the moderator tells the girl the kiss she threw felt like littering the arena. On hearing how harsh the crowd were, Nora's team began to freak out while the crowd continued to bully the fugly pig party. On a scale of 3,000, they were graded 61 which buried their self-confidence finally. Emma wanted to go home so Lola told her she could since the crowd wouldn't like her gigantic forehead in the first place. She then screams that she wasn't going to go home and at the stage, the other teams took their fair share of insults from the hating crowd. However, a group of baddies finally took the stage and Lola revealed that they were adventurers from Lamu, a rival guild. Truly, the party was so breathtaking that the hating crowd were left mute, so they were awarded a total of 2,700 points. Nor noticed the crowd's frustration and imagined what would happen if his girls turned out to be useless, but then he brushed it off. However, when his team was called out, the crowd activated their X-ray vision ready to attack. Emma took the stage happily and introduced herself to the crowd while feeling shy. There came a brief awkward moment of silence before the crowd begged to bury their faces on her airbags. And just like that, her fan base exploded so Luna went second and introduced herself, followed by Lola who didn't seem new to teasing people. When the moderator saw the score was 29-25 which was a new record, Nora and girls jumped for joy. However, the moderator revealed that the competition was far from over as he wore his mask. He claimed that they have to satisfy everyone in the crowd in order to win the competition. He explained that each harem member would have to role-play a scenario the crowd chooses with their master. The first one was how to take care of their shivering master in a cold night, and while they saw the other tasks, the girls held a meeting to determine what to do. As expected, the socks obsessed boy acted his role perfectly so the girls used their plots to insulate him. As the crowd watched their role-playing, they were moved to tears and yelled so loud that the Colosseum erupted in screams. They declared them the winners, tossed their price money at them before sending them away in frustration. Immediately they left, they headed to the Duke's mansion, where they met a man crying outside. Nora revealed he took a peek at Maria's stat and had arrived with a plan to cure her. While Maria lay unconscious, she dreamt of her depressing childhood which was due to the fact that a sore loser her ancestors defeated curse her bloodline with a death curse that activated during her time. Since she was bound to die early, she decided to live life happily by enrolling in the Heroes Academy. When Nor entered the room, he introduced himself to the Duke as well Luna who they recognized and inquired if she had a change of heart. She then explained that the reason she declined their request before was because the curse would eat up her remaining lifespan but thanks to Nor, the situation has changed drastically. He explained that he has edited her skill so that it affects her finances instead of her lifespan. On hearing this, everyone's mood lightened and Amain confessed that Maria had her hoots for him ever since he broke the Academy entrance record. He then asked how she knew he defeated the Reaper since he didn't claim credit, but all Amain said was Maria was good at reading people's emotion. Maria then woke up and asked why he was going out of his way to help her, so he told her she was the only noble that accepted him despite his low rank so he wanted to thank her. Luna then began the process by channeling mana into Maria which made her glow bright causing the evil curse to put up a strong fight. Although he tried to resist, Luna used everything she had to force the curse out and successfully dispel the curse. After the light show, Luna was breathing like she pulled Santa's sleigh personally while Nora used his eyes to confirm that the curse was gone for good. After he confirmed it, everyone burst into tears, and they all thanked Luna who in turn thanked them for giving her a second chance to fulfill her life goal. 
Maria then took Nora's hand and promised to repay her debt to him for the rest of her life, but the girls somehow knew that meant an extra harem member. While they sulked outside, Luna revealed she too had fallen for the short king which made Emma pissed but Miff Clueless had no idea he was now a low-key Rizzler. Later that day, he narrated everything that happened to Olivia while thanking her. She then noticed he reeked of female hormones so he confessed to kissing Maria to gain LP which she frowned at so she demanded for a kiss too. Nora thought she was overdoing it even though the Pino police department couldn't possibly reach the dungeon, however, he thought he might get a chance to recreate the Mai Mai scene from Jujutsu Kaisen, so he walked forward only for the ballless coward to kiss her forehead. The next day, they got a chest full of coins from the Duke as gratitude for saving their daughter. Even after splitting the money, each of them had a hundred million rels for themselves. When Luna reveals she'll renovate her clinic, Nora considers buying an OnlyFans premium access, but Emma encourages him to open a shop where he can sell monster materials. As she explained the importance of investing, it was clear that she was already planning a wedding in her head so Lola butted in, claiming she could do math and help him keep track of his finances unlike her whose only selling point was her milk factory. As expected, Luna too wanted to help him so the trio started bickering, which made Nora make up an excuse before running away. At home, Shitty Dad was stunned by the stake of coins Nora brought home. When they asked what he'll do with the money, he claimed he was still thinking about it, so Shitty Dad volunteered to handle the money himself. However, it turns out he was also a shitty gambling addict, but he boasted about his incredible luck, so his wife reminded him they were broke. Nora then decided to stick with opening a shop which made Shitty Dad beg to be hired. Everyone already knew he knew no shame, however, they've come to accept him for the Shitty Dad that he is. Later that day, Nora headed to the dungeon to gather materials. When he arrived at Olivia's lair, she didn't respond to his calls which made him think she was dead, so he started touching her, until she couldn't hold herself anymore. She complained that he didn't come to see her often and when she asked what he needed, he told her he would like to explore more of the dungeons which made her suggest he use the creative skill to make a dungeon elevator skill. With this skill, he could instantly spawn in a floor he has been to before, however, he can only use it once every hour. Next, she makes him equip a blinding skill in case he wants to escape from a powerful monster. The idiot actually tried it on himself and almost blinded his eyes which couldn't see Emma's glowing green light in the first place. Once on the fifth floor, he noticed two monsters already dead and wondered if they killed each other. Just then, a black lion showed up behind him. He used his discerning eyes to evaluate it but couldn't get any information about his status. As the dragon approached, he quickly activated the blinding light and created a portal in an attempt to escape. However, the dragon told him to stop, promising not to harm him since he had a cute face. However, Nor was confused as he wondered why Mufasa was growing a tulip on his head. After acknowledging his strength, the lion offered to take him to the sixth floor and in exchange he'll help him search for someone. Nor ended up accepting the free Uber ride so the lion ran at maximum speed while defeating several monsters easily. He then introduced himself as Tigerson, which was clearly absurd, so he explained that his numbskull friend gave him the name. He then explained how he and his friend arrived at the dungeon and easily made it to the fifth floor, but the friend wanted to test the strength of his balls by exploring the sixth floor on his own. He wanted to clear the traps using his skills to make it safe for Tigerson, however, he ended up waiting for his friend for 350 years, which shocked Nora, but he recalled the patient dogs always got the fastest bone. Tigerson revealed his friend, Vashel was an elf, so it was possible he would still be alive since the dungeon is notorious for keeping people alive. Nor soon got to the sixth floor alone but couldn't see shit as everywhere was pitch black, so he created a night vision skill. He soon noticed something approaching him and realized it was a freaking monster which made him panic. He checked its stats and saw that it was a level 110 zombie, and there were so many of them. In addition, they could detach their body parts into six and chase after him, which made them even more freakish. Nor managed to outrun them by going through a door, and when he passed through the second door, he still found a zombie. However, this one was peculiarly dressed, so he checked his status and realized it was Vashel. He tried to talk to him, but there was no response, so he used his editor's skill to remove his zombie form. This made Vashel return back to his elf form, after which Nor explained that he had been trapped for over 300 years, while Tigerson waited for him. This brought him to tears as he recalled what a great friend Tigerson was to him after they coincidentally became friends. He claimed that he only went to the sixth floor alone since he wanted to be useful to Tigerson, who was always protecting him. Nor could relate as Emma had been the one protecting his ass since his skill was more useless than the warning sign on the cigarette pack. After summing up the courage, he went with Nor back to the fifth floor where he reunited with Tigerson, who was just glad to see him alive. He then told the lion to give up on conquering the dungeon as he wanted to check if his lover was still alive back at home. 
Apparently, the dude didn't know that it's homies over hoes, and to make matters worse, he revealed that strangers aren't allowed in his village, which meant that he was ditching Tigerson after he waited for him for 350 years. They decided to part ways, however, Vashel was visibly guilty for wasting so much of Tigerson's life, but the lion did mind as he was also an Arsenal fan who was still waiting for them to win the Champions League. In tears, the duo said their goodbyes, and once at the surface, Vashel promised to repay Nora for saving his life. After he left, Nor asked what he planned to do now that his friend was gone, so he revealed he forgot something on the fifth floor and was headed back to get it. Out of curiosity, Nor stalked him only to find him throwing a tantrum by defeating innocent monsters. At first he thought he was angry, but Sue discovered the furry buddy was secretly crying as parting with his best friend was too hard to bear. Seeing how faithful he was to Vashel, Nor was moved deep in the heart, so he asked Tigerson to be his friend. This came as a shock to him, but Nora was dead serious, so he accepted the invite to come live in his house. With that settled, he hopped on his back as they rode back to town, while Tigerson thought how lucky he was to have another friend like Vashel. When getting home, Shitty Dad almost shat himself as Tigerson tried to fit his big butt through their small foe. Nora's NPC mom couldn't care what happened while Alice was ecstatic. Tigerson and Shitty Dad quickly hit it off, but he still had asked for good measure to make sure he wouldn't eat them when he felt like it. Meanwhile, Alice decided to pet the tulip on his head, which made him make weird noises that were glad this recap cut out the sound. Some days later, just before they opened the guild door, they overheard two girls bickering and once inside, they found Lola arguing with another receptionist. Early that morning, Emma met up with Nora looking bouncy and energetic as usual. She noticed Nora was staring, so she gave him a morning LP boost by almost shattering his thorax. Since everyone was staring, he begged her to stop, but in her mind, she thought he was secretly embarrassed to be seen with her. In school, Maria and Amain came to thank him one again for going out of his way to help them. She then went close to feel his manly chest while Amain talked about their upcoming test, which the insul brain had no idea was close. Elma also arrived, and the first thing she does is explain how the exam system worked since they were still freshmen. She explained that the exam period would span two weeks, and in that period, they'll be asked to gather specific monster materials which they can obtain however they feel. The students all murmured as they noticed the materials were all rare items including a dragon which their money probably couldn't get them unlike during the entrance exam. To make matters worse, Elma adds that anyone who doesn't reach 10,000 points would have to take supplementary classes all through summer. During lunch break, Emma wanted to come up with a strategy to salvage the materials, but even Nora claimed it was going to be a difficult task. When he asked what she had in mind, she yelled that she wanted a dragon which would surely place them in the highest rank. Nora then suggested they head to the guild to inquire from Lola. That's when they met the commotion where Luna was desperately trying to stop Lola from slapping Sarah, her fellow receptionist who had stolen two adventurers under her guidance. However, Sarah simply flaunted her fake plots and silky skin stating that the adventurers got bored looking at Lola's unrefined appearance because truly she looked like a daycare nanny. As Lola continued to complain, Sarah mocked her for lagging behind in the weekly rankings where her score was so high one could die if they tried jumping to Lola's level. Nora recalled that the rankings affected their bonuses as well as work privileges and felt sorry for her. Although Luna recalls that there's an unwritten rule preventing receptionists from stealing other people's adventurers, Lola explained that Sarah goes the extra mile and uses her charms to seduce people. However, the straight-faced bitch denies the accusations and asks for proof, but since Lola didn't have any, she branded her a failure which pissed her so much that she vowed to never allow her steal another client from her. For that month, she challenges Sarah to a contest which she agrees to with the condition that if she wins she would be taking one of her adventurers, to be specific the short king Nor who couldn't resist her charms. Seeing that he was being turned into a simp, he checked her status and discovered that all her skills would be useful in the bedroom. And he even got a nosebleed just from imagining what her skills could do. Sarah then left them to go inside a room where she unleashed her inner wicked stepmother laugh as she claimed she had already disciplined her men to make sure they are super loyal to her. Meanwhile, Noor asked Lola if she had a chance of winning and seeing her reaction, so he promised to help her out. He explained he was looking for a high-level quest because of the academy exam and since it would also boost her ranking, they agreed to help each other. Luna also volunteered to help out, revealing that she used to be in a party but stopped since her coordinate skill could become problematic during field missions. Nora then agreed, so the team vowed to clap Sarah's ass together. In the forest alongside Luna, they began to defeat monster after monster until all that was left was to defeat a dragon. Thanks to her connections as a cleric, Luna was able to discover the location of an earth dragon. However, Emma claimed she heard dragons would kill any human it laid its eyes on instantly. Being the son of his father, Nora decided it would be best to use a roundabout method to trap the dragon before stabbing it to death. 
To prepare, they got themselves new spears for the stabbing and Nor also refilled his LP from as many girls available. This allowed him to grant them skills, and so they were prepared to hunt the dragon. Tigerson then gave them a ride to the mountain where the dragon leaves and on getting there, they left Tigerson at the entrance while they went in alone. Nor then asks the great sage for the location of the dragon so he is instructed to head north. After using the skill, he had a headache so Emma went to kiss him which Luna frowned at but even after explaining, she didn't buy their headache story. Afterwards, they started digging and setting up the trap for the dragon. Once they were done, he took a peek at the dragon to analyze its skill in case he needed to nullify any of it. However, any editing would cost the stinky bastard too much LP so he took a stone and tossed it at the dragon who woke up and noticed him immediately. They roared loudly in front of him so Nor ran for his life, although he almost got crushed. He started leading the dragon towards the trap while it fired giant rock blasts at him relentlessly. They soon got to the location of the trap which the stonehead dragon fell for, and immediately the girls began their stabbing spree. Nor also joins in by stabbing its head, but the dragon blasted him with so many rocks that he almost died. However, they soon defeated the dragon after which they rushed to his side and Luna healed him with her magic bullet. Back in school, Elma was shocked they actually killed a freaking earth dragon. As for the rest of the loot, it took it to the guild which caused a big scene. Thanks to his contribution, Lola's ranking shot up causing them to leap for joy but their excitement was short-lived as Sarah's score soon overtook them as well. Lola thought she was definitely cheating however there was no proof to nail the sly girl. It turned out she had everyone under her control overwork themselves until they were identical to beat up zombies. As they begged her to reward their hard work, she told them they still had a lot to do before teasing them to boost their morale, enticing Nor who was now also interested in her reward. At that point, Lola was totally pissed so she took Noor to a secret room and began to strip only for her to pull a Touch Me Anywhere coupon like she was 11 years old. She told him they'll have to redeem the coupons to use them, but for the day, he had to lay down and be serviced. Noor then stopped her as he thought she was putting up a front, so she let herself cry. Later that day, he went to the dungeon to seek Olivia's advice, who then instructed him to head to the 7th floor of the dungeon if he really wanted the rack and strong monsters. However, she claims he isn't strong enough and suggests he makes a combo skill of using fire water and lightning elements. She explained that he could get holy flames which could take out zombies easily or water drops which could be handy. Lastly, he could also try lightning which would be perfect for a fence. Immediately, Nor bought the skills so she continued by explaining he would have to create a magic fusion skill next in order to pull an overpowered spell. He then headed to the 6th floor where he met some zombies, so he combined Earth Bullet with Holy Flames and was able to pull an insane attack that barbed the zombies. The strength of the attack was so powerful that he thought he could probably take on a demon lord which made him head down to the 7th floor. Like any typical anime, the 7th floor looked like a forest with sunlight, trees and fresh breeze which made him awestruck. As he observed the amazing scenery, he noticed a pack of wolves munching on another monster furiously. He immediately checked their status, which was three times higher than his, so he thought it best to retreat. Just then, a girl approached him and claimed she had a request because Tigerson apparently ran around telling the monsters around he could be her busboy. When he turned around, he saw a cute little girl, who also had a flower on her head, but more importantly, she reminded him of little Emma which made him recall a time in their childhood when Emma was still a surfboard. He then checked her status and discovered she was a level 55 dryad. The Dryad then asked him for a favor, revealing that if he didn't help her, she was going to die. She began to beg him earnestly and for some reason she dived to the ground. She claimed it was her way of completely surrendering himself to him so Nor decided to at least hear what her request was. She then explained that she is a great tree in the forest and Nor recalled that Elna once said Dryads are spirits of the forest. She adds that her skill connects her to every part of the forest which allows her to know what is happening at any given time. When he asked why she was in the form of a child, she told him she felt a pervert like him would pay her more attention however the idiot just blushed as he wasn't ready for some forbidden love. She then revealed that something was draining her and it was so creepy that it was discomforting and also draining her life force. At this point, Nora thought she was probably playing with his intelligence which to be honest wasn't much. She went on to explain that her real body was an old ass tree the monster was sucking and asked him to defeat the monster and in exchange. She would tell him where the treasure boxes are as well as the way to the next floor. It seemed like a fair trade considering he had to help Lolo win the ranking so he told her he would first have to check out the monster and proudly called himself a scared chicken. She acknowledges his name as Miss Chicken and also introduces herself as Dory. Together, they headed to the location of her real body where they are able to observe the gold bee monster draining her life force. She claimed the bees are supposed to be bronze but that one has mutated which explains why it wasn't in a colony. 
Using his discerning eye, he realized its level was a freaking 256, so he clearly told her the monster would one-shot his ass if he dared approach it. She then apologized for asking the impossible and just then, she fell down in pain so Nora checked the bee to find it sucking mana from her main body care freely. Although he knew there was no way in hell he could defeat the golden bee, he took another look at the damage to her real body, observing that she was already falling apart gradually. She summoned the strength to stand up and show him the way to the next floor, but seeing how she pushed herself, he cursed his weakness and told her he couldn't be so heartless that he'd leave her alone to suffer when she reminded him so much of Emma. He then headed back to Olivia's lair to seek her great knowledge, and as expected, she was glad her student relied on her. However, she advised him to ignore Dory's requests since he was nowhere as strong as an overpowered protagonist. Still, Nora wanted to give it his all, which made her ask if he had fallen for the tree lowly in a matter of minutes. Nora explained that it's only because she reminded him of Emma, so she decided to help out, revealing that he must promise not to die or she'll go to hell and punch his nuts. He then asked why she won't go to heaven, but the lady claims she's been a bad girl. Back at the seventh floor, they located the golden bee in his nest, and immediately, Nora created a skill called Target that locked onto his enemy. Next, he went close to the pack of wolves and told Dory to hide as the plan was dangerous. She then gave him an unsolicited LP boost before running away to hide. Nor tossed a rock at a wolf causing them all to charge at him as he ran away thinking they couldn't catch up. However, they were faster than anticipated and soon caught up to him, almost slashing from behind. As he fell down, they surrounded him ready to clap his ass, but then he used the blinding light skill to make his escape. As he ran away, he encountered the golden bee sucking on Dory when it was supposed to be in its nest. On the floor was Dory who had fallen unconscious so in anger, he attacked the bee with his sword, but it parried the strike. He shot lightning bolts at it, however it was too fast. Soon the wolves caught up to him eager to skin him alive, so he used the target skill to make the silver wolves hate the golden bee. This made the pack attack the golden bee at once and the battle soon became a bloody one with the wolves taking more damage. However, the bee eventually took care of the busybody wolves and got ready to fight Nor, who then used a fusion of water and electricity, launched it at the bee and Pikachu, its yellow ass. Shortly afterwards, Dory woke up and thanked him for saving her life even though she couldn't help out. She actually showed him the location of the chest and even helped him retrieve the items inside. Using his discerning eyes, he learns that the orb enhances mages like Emma with wind attributes while the golden clip was a grade triple of fruitful drop. This made him excited, so he thanked her for fulfilling her part of the bargain. She also showed him the entrance to the 8th floor, which he knew he wouldn't be able to find given 6 months. Back in town, he gave the rare item to Lola to help her win the rankings. On the day of the final announcement, everyone was hyped as though it was the event of the year. Each receptionist chooses her top adventurer to represent them, so they are placed in the podium together. They then begin counting the number of coins which the guild master gave them based on their performance. One after the other, the adventurers dropped out until all that was left was Lola and Sarah's reps. The battle continued to be a tie, but then it seemed like Noor ran out of coins. As the atmosphere grew tense, they both revealed their last hand and Noor ended up winning so Lola was declared the winner. As expected, Sarah accused them of cheating, but then Lola reminded her she had no proof and told her to refrain from stealing her colleagues' adventurers. As she wallowed in failure, Noor, who was still simping for her, cheered her up so she used the opportunity to slip a note with her house address in his hand. Lola noticed this and chased after her with a spiky club. The next day, he gave Emma the wind orb so the Glock Queen swallowed it immediately. This made her body glow brightly as Nora observed that she gained two new skills, one of which made her the Flash. She tested out the first skill called Run Like a Wind, after which she tried the Wind Slash Attack skill, which was also very powerful. Although she thanked him for the gift, she looked down which made him ask if her chest was making her back her again, but she said no and asked him to accompany her to a party. Moore recalled it was supposed to be a party for nobles, but she explained that she'll be made to dance and wanted him to do the honors. At first he hesitated for some reason, but when she told him she would have to look for another guy, he reluctantly agreed to accompany her. His unenthusiastic attitude only made her mad as she claimed he wasn't paying enough attention to her, and would probably not notice if she falls for another guy, or got kidnapped. At home, he met his family yelling loudly, and the shitty dad was taking his anger on an innocent handkerchief. When he asked what happened, they revealed that they haven't found a shop for him, because no one wanted to sell or rent a space for a bottom feeder noble. This reminded Nora that despite the fact that he has become stronger, he was still the son of a lowly baronet who isn't even considered as nobles. To cheer his father up, he told him to take things slow as he never had faith he could successfully secure a location in the first place. Moving on, he asked his shitty dad if he had any clothes for a party revealing that he was going to accompany Emma to one that evening. 
So the NPC dad brought an ugly ass suit that looked like tigers and shat on it, but he claimed it was the best he had. Seeing the state of their family treasure, which was probably the only thing he would inherit, he decided to just get a new one. At the party, he looked sleek and even Emma's parents noticed him and thanked him for looking up for Emma. When he asked where she was, they told him to wait a bit as she was still dressing. The dad then whispered to Noor, asking him if he knew what the party was about and from his response he knew Noor had no idea what was at play. Just then, Emma arrived looking like ice spice without the burnt hair and as expected. The first thing she does is make him notice her 106 centimeters luxury cannons. Shortly after, the host who will call Jack Sparrow revealed that some nights ago, the Phantom Thief sent him a letter. At the mention of the name, everyone's mood changed and Noor noticed Emma was shaken. Jack told them to put their mind at ease while revealing that although the thief is after his prized jewel called Mermaid Tears, he has no chance of stealing it because he has hired the best adventurers from Long Guild to protect it. One look at the adventurers and you could tell they looked powerful, but Curious Noor still used his eyes on the female adventurer, who was just 16 years old but had a level of 148. With the assurance that the jewel is in safe hands, everyone moved on happily except Emma, who was still terrified. When he asked if the thief threatened her, she quickly changed the topic and wore a fake smile. Later on, they watched as their age group took turns dancing on stage. A stylish guy called Mike came to greet Emma, which made Noor kind of jealous. He then proceeded to ask her to court him again, but she turned him down. This made him assume Noor was the cock blocker, so when he learns he's from a bear in a family, he proposed a competition to see who could dance better with Emma. Noor easily accepted the challenge which was unlike him, but with Emma on the line, it seemed his plastic balls had become bronze. Mike took to the stage with Emma first and got a huge cheer from the crowd as his performance matched the expectation of nobility. When it's Noor's turn, he made a dancing skill before taking the stage. Still, he was nervous from all the piercing stares, so Emma gave him a jab to calm him down. As soon as they started dancing, it flowed so well that everyone was impressed by their performance, causing a loud applause that made him the obvious winner. As he moved to kiss her, the light went off signaling the arrival of the phantom thief, who was obsessed with attention since she wasn't loved at home. She proclaimed she had come for the mermaid's tears as well as Emma. This came as a shock to Noah as he recalled her strange questions earlier that day. Immediately, the female adventurer went after her on the chandelier, but she blitzed past her and went down to steal Emma right from under Nora's grasp. She then used a sleeping spell on Emma and kicked the weak ass away before making her escape. Idiot Jack Sparrow quickly went to check if his jewel was still intact, but ended up revealing its location to the real phantom thief, who was disguised in the crowd. Since they successfully took what they needed, they burst through the window like Batman to make their escape. The adventurers decided to split into two groups to chase after the intruders, so Noor begged to accompany them. However, she told him that he wasn't strong enough to fight with them as he is weak, but when he protested, she introduced herself as Layla and asked him not to slow him down. They soon caught up with the female phantom, so Noor quickly checked her status to know what skill set posed a greater problem to them. He then warns Layla to be careful of her summoning skill and with the cat out of the bag, the old hag summons a level 50 firebird. To begin the attack, she fired at them, while the bird focused on Noor. As it attacked with a breath of hell flames, Layla used a demon fist move to deflect the flames. By this time, Ugly Red Clown had equipped her knife and moved to attack Noor while Layla went after the bird. However, it could dodge her attacks midair, which was a pain in the ass. Noor wanted to edit her summoning skill, but since he wasted his LP playing Michael Jackson earlier, he didn't have any to spare. He then tried out his weak lightning bolt, which she easily dodged. Although she admitted to being weak to lightning, she knew Nora's range, so she took a step back. Meanwhile, Lila was being smoked by the annoying bird, so to help her out, he created a gravity skill that weighed the bird down. He then fired a water spell that Red Ranger deflected, but it had a mix of lightning, which fried her ass. Immediately, Layla punched the firebird and defeated it, which made the Red Clown give up on the battle. Nora quickly went to check up on Emma, but soon realized she was still under the influence of the sleeping magic placed on her. Both Noor and Layla then took the time to praise each other's skill, and although they knew they were from rival guilds, they decided to be friends regardless. Shortly after, Layla's leader arrived claiming that he already caught the male phantom and wanted to back them up. Noor noticed something off about the muscle brain, so while he applauded them for defeating the Red Clown, Noor used discerning eyes only to discover he was being blocked out. Just then, he got sucker punched by the guy after which he used gravity manipulation to suppress both of them easily. He then took Sleeping Beauty for himself, and when Layla demanded an explanation, Noor knocked off his earring which made him transform back to the male phantom thief. He claimed he plans to make Emma his wife since he was so powerful he could take whatever he wanted. 
Seeing him get freaky with her, Nora overcomes the gravity pull and stands up. The Phantom increased the output of the pull, however, he overcame the crushing effect on his body, and while he was distracted, Emma woke up and sent him flying with a punch while Nora finished the combo by knocking him cold. Back at the mansion, Jack Sparrow thanked Nora for saving the day and promising to repay him someday. Emma's parents also thanked him for saving their daughter, who was happy to be treated right by Nora for once. As thanks for helping out, Jack Sparrow helped them secure a space for his rare monster items at a discounted rate, which made the poor family happy. Some days later in school, Elma announced that they would be having a transfer student who turned out to be Lila. Lila introduces herself as an adventurer who immediately charms the boys, making the ugly girls visibly jealous. It was then Nor realized it was the same Lila he fought alongside some days ago. Seeing that they know each other, Elma tells her to sit beside Nor, so she does, which makes the other high rank pained. Moving on, Elma announced that it was time for the special lessons which made the newbie Lila curious. She then asked some guys what the special training was about, so they yelled that it meant a training camp, which meant a class vacation to the hot spring. On their way to the hot spring, Elma warned them to be alert as they might encounter monsters around. However, Emma was pretty excited as it was an opportunity to take her skincare routine to the next level. Seeing her excitement, Nora thought it would be a bad idea for her to participate in the training camp as she was sure to overdo it. Meanwhile, the guys were also anticipating the open bath, which was their one shot at finally seeing some plots. This made the girls make plans to stay out of sight, but Coconut Brain Emma said it was fine if the guys saw her. They then turned their attention to Nora, hoping he'd stop anyone who tried to peek and seeing their faces, the closet pervert had no choice but to shut the up. Later on, everyone was goofing around so Elna reminded them to be on alert, but the spiky-haired boy told her they were elite who could easily defeat any monsters, so she made him eat dirt with one move. She bluntly tells him people like him are usually the characters the author kill off to during the protagonist's development arcs. Now angry, she yells at them to take formation before she returns. Since the boys were all slow-witted, Layla took command and began barking instructions at everyone, which the NPCs were fine with since it was a rare opportunity for a hot baddie to take to them. As they proceeded to the hot spring, Spiky Hair proved he wasn't totally useless when he told Nora to stop. He then tossed a stone in front of him which activated a pitfall trap. The show-off wanted the girls to praise him for being useful, but they were all distracted by some pretty wild flowers. As Nora wondered who set the trap, a pixie showed up and revealed that the pitfall was the work of some bandits. She also claimed she wasn't a bad monster which was sketchy, but Spiky Hair bought her story. Once the girls noticed the pixie, they all rushed to pet her like she was the golden goose. Nor then used his discerning eyes to check her out and noticed she had a skill called monster puppetry. He looked at Elna waiting for a response, but she turned her eyes away to indicate that they were on their own. The pixie told them she knew a shortcut to the hot spring, so everyone followed her like a bunch of donkeys. Soon they passed through a cave that was pitch black which got Nor concerned, but Spiky was confident in his trap detection skill and took point. Nor also drew his sword just for good measure, but the pixie complained that it was scaring her and asked him to put it away. When they got to the center of the cave with a lot of holes, Nor was sure that monsters were hiding in them, so he confronted the pixie, revealing that he knew she had a puppetry skill. This made her come clean and ordered the lizardmen hiding to attack. Immediately, a bunch of armed lizardmen blocked their path, but before Nor could ask his teammates to stay in formation, they all rushed head first into battle in hopes of proving a point. Nor soon noticed the girls were in danger, but his concerns were unwarranted as Layla and his harem girls were able to hold their own against the monsters. In time, all the lizardmen were defeated, which made the pixie make a run for it. However, Nor used his gravity skill to stop her escape. Once they made it to the other side, Elna wanted to play the I told you so card, but then they noticed the hot spring from afar which made them leap for joy and totally ignore her words. Later on, they arrive at their lodging where they are welcomed by an old hag on death's door. The old hag announced that the hot spring was ready for the ladies, but they were cautious of the guy so spiky on behalf of his fellow scums, promise not to peek at them. Since the lizardmen probably hit their heads too hard, the girls decided to buy their false vow before leaving. Once they left, the guys unleashed their true colors as they even sang a brotherhood anthem as they prepared to burn the sight of bear plots in their minds. Spiky took point as the leader of the degenerate bunch and distributed masks to everyone present including Nor, who unwillingly accepted it. As he held it, he got flashbacks from when the girls made him their knight in shining armor so he refused their invitation. This made them brand him a traitor so they began chasing him around the lodgings until he went in the direction of the open female bath. Fortunately, Elna stood guard and pulled an earth jutsu which stopped them all on their track. Filled with burning determination, they stood up and continued their advance towards Plot Paradise, so both Elna and Nora used an earth attack to stop them for good this time. 
Now only their leader Spikey was left standing, ready to avenge his fallen comrades. When he and Elna exchanged blows, he pushed her back with so much force Nora had to save her. She then asked how he became so strong, which made him reveal he took a lot of power buff potions after which he activated them and transformed into a Gigacad muscle brain. Elna called him stupid for going out of his way just to see some plots, but her words made him furious, so he explained the passion of checking out the plots of a classmate. He tried to convince Noor to join him to fulfill every guy's dream, but he managed to resist the urge and said he would never betray his friends in such a way. This made Spikey attack him head-on in a battle of conviction, where they both tried to show who is stronger. However, Noor is overpowered in terms of brute force, so he activated a skill that renders his opponent powerless which allowed him capable of slamming Spikey to the ground. Just then, another guy who had been pretending to be beat started running towards the hot spring. Nor tried to chase after him, but the guy called Kent was so fast he was leaving him in the dust. He decided to make his stats slow, but it cost too much LP. However, since Emma's calcium cannons were on the line, he risked his life to activate the skill. Despite being slowed down, Kent managed to jump into the spring followed by Nor. In a turn of events, the girls weren't in the hot spring as Elena had told them to hold on. Since he used too much LP, he fell unconscious inside the water. When he woke up, he found himself blindfolded and Elna revealed they were allowing him to bathe with them as a reward for stopping the degenerate scums who were busy bawling their eyes out trapped in their room. The following week during their first day opening the shop, Lola single-handedly moved heavy furniture revealing that she was Gorilla Grodd's distant cousin. Thanks to Nora's consistent hard work, a shop was staked full with rare items which made Luna project that they only needed a few weeks to blow up. Noor also gave the girls some weird stuff to taste, which they loved not knowing it was the corpse of the slimes from the dungeon. Soon people flocked into the store to check out their rare goods, making shitty dad cry as Noor thanked him for promoting the store. At that point, he thanked Noor once again for turning their lives around and said how proud he was and this made him look back at how far he had come. He then went back to the dungeon and revealed he wants to free Olivia from her chains and end her suffering as thanks for making a useless loser like him into a powerful adventurer. She appreciates his efforts but begs him not to push himself too hard. Immediately he left her floor, he asks the great sage how he can free Olivia from the death chains without killing her, so the sage tells him to head to the 15th floor, where the answer to his question will be answered. He soon arrived in the 14th floor, where a signpost with directions for a trial was placed depending on the number of adventurers present. The first path was for solo adventurers, while the second part was for a party. He then passed through the first path and ended up in a tiny bridge with spikes underneath. At the beginning of the bridge, there was a warning sign indicating skills could not be used to cross. As a coward that he is, he doesn't risk the trial alone and decided it was time to reveal Olivia's secret to Emma. After informing her about Olivia, as well as the hidden dungeon, she promised to help him out even if it meant fighting Lucifer. They immediately headed back to the 14th floor and passed through the second path that led them into a room with holes at each corner. The door they came through automatically locked and just then, a bunch of tiny goblins surrounded them. The goblins asked them to toss away their weapons, so they both decided to play along. Next, they asked for some food so Noor brought out cookies from his storage dimension and handed it to them. Once the leader tasted it and discovered it was sweet, he called on others too, just like Eve called Adam. While they munched on it, he also demanded Emma entertain them by acting like a pig, which she only does because Noor asked her to. However, the leader said her performance was boring so she didn't deserve to waste the atmospheric oxygen. Emma almost stumped them, but Noor held her. After a while, the goblins began to cough out their guts one by one, so Nor explained that he used his creation skill to add poison to the cookies. Since they successfully got past the goblins, they got to the 15th floor where they found Olivia or someone who looks like her in chains. He tried to talk to her telepathically like he normally does, but she doesn't respond which made him check her stats. He learns the girl bound is Olivia's clone while the chains were the real death chains. He also noticed a stone tablet beside her which told them to free her without killing her. This made Emma use her wind strike on the chains to successfully free the clone. When she awakened, she acted all friendly with them. However, Nora accused her of being the death chains, so she stopped pretending. Nora attacked with a stone bullet only for her to kick it away like it was a balloon. She then used a powerful flame attack that took the form of a dragon that could lock onto its target. Emma tried to attack with her two daggers, but she too was kicked the f away by the powerful Seeing them getting all cozy, she unleashed a powerful flame spell that made Nor so scared that he used his escape skill to run away back to the original Olivia's lair. Here Emma asked if she has a weakness since it might help them defeat her overpowered clone. However, she couldn't think of anything and simply told them to forget about defeating the Death Chains, but Nor refused, stating that he must repay her for all the kindness she showed him. 
The following day, Nora headed to the library to investigate Olivia's history in hopes of figuring out her weaknesses. As he reads on, he learns that a cleric with a sacrifice skill was able to give Olivia a run for her money. Outside, he assessed the sacrifice skill, which cost 10,000 LP, and discovered that it allowed adventurers to upgrade their useless skill for an instant power buff during battle, so he activated the skill. That night, he stumbles on fake Olivia in town, and she reveals that her job is to eliminate any intruder on her floor. However, she got bored and wanted to bully him instead. She then asks how he plans to save his master, so to make matters worse, she informs him Olivia has been hiding the excruciating pain she endured in the dungeon daily. This only made him more determined to free her, making him activate the sacrifice skill and got an instant buff. He first tried out a lightning spell that she dodged, followed by a head-on attack with his sword, but she was only pretending to be worried as she easily slashed his chest. Although it was a light cut, his body grew numb which made him realize she added a lightning attack to her strike. Meanwhile, Olivia was able to feel his wavering consciousness since she is linked to her clone. This made her recall why she really took an interest in Noor. 200 years ago, a loser that looked exactly like him suddenly begged to be her student while she was busy having fun at a bar. She shushed him like an annoying fly only for him to go face flat on the ground, but she refused because she didn't know how to teach someone. However, the boy was consistent and followed her everywhere for days, weeks, and months just to prove how determined he was. After disrupting her daily routine for a while, she asked why he was so obsessed, so he told her he promised his deceased friend that he would become the greatest adventurer to ever live. She then told him that if he could land a scratch on her, she would accept him as her student. He drew his sword and struck her from behind only for her to stand on its sharp edge with her bare feet. She told him he was weaker than an NPC and advised him to give up on his dreams and die. However, the stalker continued to follow her around. Eventually, she began to indulge him little by little and just when she was beginning to enjoy, the barkeeper informed her that the guy passed away. Turns out he tried protecting a girl from a monster and ended up toast. Seeing him lay lifeless, she blamed herself for his death because if she had trained him properly, things would have been different. Back at the battle, just when Nora was about to bite the dust, Emma used her flash step to kick the clone away from him. The other harem burls also showed up and Luna used her healing gun to heal him. While they stood in front of him, the clone mocked the adorable bunch while reminding them that they weren't in a Disney musical. Immediately, they ganged up on her using a well-coordinated combo attack, but then she attacked Emma from behind and Pikachu at her ass. Gorilla Emma then began to toss gallons at her which pushed her back for a while until she counterattacked with a powerful throw too. Nora then deleted the lightning attributes on her sword so Lila punched it with so much force that it shattered. She followed up with a punch that was curved easier than Drake curves a one-night stand after which she unleashed her flame dragon that turned her to french fries. Just then, all the burrows began to collapse as the clone had used a skill to give them fever. She unleashed her flame again ready to end him so he dodged just in time although it took everything she got. He soon realized she made his movement sluggish with a skill and even when he attacked with a stone bullet, it turned around to attack him instead. At this point he acknowledged that she could use Olivia's skills better than him. She told him to give up, but he refused and went to give an unsolicited backstory no one gives two f**ks about, ending it with the fact that he must absolutely save Olivia. He then exchanged all his skills except for get creative and got a powerful buff, which he used to launch after her and for the first time he was able to follow her movements accurately. But even when he slashed her, his sword couldn't scratch her skin, which gave her the opportunity to invest some heavy blows on his face repeatedly until he was tossed away. She unleashed her dragon flames once again, which made his life flash before his eyes. So he rushed towards it head on, slashing it with the power of plot armor and using the momentum to score a headshot that petrified her, turning her into dust. His victory meant that Olivia was now free, so he went to meet her on a vast field and give her a warm hug as he sobbed on her plots. Nor's business continued to grow steadily thanks to his family's support, while his harem girls used any opportunity they could get to refill his LP without him begging for it.